Here we are. Hi, John. How are you doing? Hi, Conrad. Good to see you. You too, likewise. Um, I wanted to get you on this chat to um, share some stuff with our community for fairly obvious reasons, because first of all, you're a fellow copywriter and a fellow copywriting agency owner. Yeah. Um, some people might be wondering, why are we as potentially two rivals in the industry, why are we collaborating like this? Yeah. Um, and I think that to that, I'd probably say that, you know, there are power in numbers um, in the Absolutely. agency world and in the freelancing world. I think it's like yeah. hugely important to, to, to befriend people in, in the same boat as you. And you learn so much from each other. And, exactly. you know, as you know, we've kind of sent each other leads before and, and, and writers and all sorts. Um, but yeah, I want to start with asking, you know, if you could just tell me a bit about yourself and right arm in a nutshell, what do you do and how do you do it? Yeah, well, I, I, uh, I've i been all kinds of things in my career. I started off in TV, in documentaries, and in the course of that, I started doing a lot of writing. Just, you know, you write memos, you write notes, you write up stories. Then I moved into uh, written journalism, writing books and articles. Then I made a sort of side shift into uh, commercial writing. So I was writing reports and stuff like that for yeah. largely for third sector, public sector organizations. Then I thought I, I went off and did a book project which lasted a couple of years. And I thought, what do I do next? Um, I had the bright idea of setting up an agency uh, without a clue of how to do it. I just knew a, a few good freelance writers. I thought I'll give this a go. Um, uh, and I kind of thought that I'd get the clients from the, uh, uh, pick up the same kind of clients I had as a freelance, but mm. um, none of them were interested, really, to be honest. And then I started getting clients from the marketing world, which I'd never really had any involvement with before. So uh, from agencies, other agencies, and from in-house marketing teams, who suddenly want what we were, uh, we were offering. Um, so yeah. I had a rethink and. Um, realized that what we were in effect was a resource for marketers so i kind of positioned the company in that way um and now we work with i mean we've probably got a couple of hundred clients and um all i write as a freelance that's the beauty of the model I'm, I'm still on that freelance model there's three staff who do the operations i'm one of them um but we have a big network of freelance writers that's ever expanding and so clients use us in a usually in an ad hoc way um, and they go for us because of that flexible element that we provide. So the, yeah, in a nutshell, that's what we're about. Nice. Did you, did you, so did you plan to create an agency? What was your, what went through your mind, you know, when you were, cause you were freelancing, you said first. Yeah. Um, what was that process? What was that step? You know, what happened? Did, did the penny drop and you said, right, I want to do an agency. Yeah, well, I was actually doing something else at the time. I had a sort of five-year stint working, um, again, using the skills I picked up in TV, um, working initially as a, a legal investigator on a big legal case, and then I wrote a book about the case, and that, that was a five-year period in my life. And about midway through that, I thought, what do I do next? And I thought, well, I'll go back to be a freelance writer. And I thought, no, that's, you know, too old. And I just had this idea of, of starting an agency, and I didn't really have a vision for it. I just thought, that's what I'll do, because hopefully people will want it and mm -hmm. it was only actually when you get on the journey that you begin to you, your ideas about what it should become or in my case at least uh began to solidify but you also react to circumstances you know you see what works you see what people like and want and you you mold yourself around that and eventually you come up with you know quite a, a, a solid proposition which was completely lacking when i started yeah as as are many i think that's yeah, just the absolutely. way it goes um how and how did you initially get business because i think like for our community and any any kind of aspiring freelancers out there copywriters yeah. or any kind of freelancer i think perhaps that worry that barrier especially if you're going from a, a nine to five is okay maybe i'm pretty good at something or i can learn and fine-tune my skills but how do I actually get clients? How do I win business, um, to, especially to start with? 
Yeah, well, you know, if, if I, you know, if when I've started, uh, I knew what I know now, it would have been a lot easier. Yeah, now, sure. I don't think anybody watching this will have been, will be in such a difficult situation as I was when I started, because firstly, I had no knowledge of the copywriting world in the kind of commercial context that only really worked for third sector and public sector organizations. So I didn't know about the marketing world, which is basically what we service. Yeah. I had no contacts. Um, and I sort of blundered through for about six months. I was tumbleweed. Um, but I, you know, I had a presence online. Eventually that started bringing in clients and I made, I, I approached a few companies speculatively, I approached a few agencies spe speculatively. And one of those got back to me with a massive chunk of work mm. uh, that I promised we could deliver. And it, and it ended up as two years worth of work. But what I now know is that what you should really do is work out what your, what your strengths are. You know, particularly if you have subject strengths, so you might, you know, you might be uh, a tech expert, say, or a sports expert or whatever. You might use your niche knowledge and then find the people who you want to work for. So look for, I, mean, I think agencies are a great source of work. Marketing agencies often outsource copywriting work. So if you're, you know, for the sake of argument, you're a tech writer, find marketing agencies that specialize in tech but also find tech companies. You can find the marketing managers of these companies online dead easily. Um, I think it's much better, you know, LinkedIn is the great source of finding people, but it's much mm. better to, once you've found them on LinkedIn, to email them and follow up. I mean, this is a lesson that I've learned, follow up. Yeah. Um, we actually now use an email marketing company and they do four emails to every prospect until they answer. Um, and it's a it's a lesson that's really worth worth uh, remembering. Um, you know, I was totally shy about following up. I would only ever write one email, um, and I hated doing that. Um, yeah. But follow up is really important, and email is really powerful. Phoning, unless you're a born salesman, is difficult. Um, uh, and inbound you know you, you can do inbound you can you know you can blog you put your stuff out there on social um but i think you know, there's no magic bullet but i think email comes as as close to it as anything yeah I, would you say like an interesting uh question here might be how would that strategy need to be adjusted or adapted during the current climate hopefully we're going to be out of this climate at some point soon yeah but obviously there are kind of more sensitivities involved are you still being as proactive slash you know or would you would you see it as being aggressive to email people right now or is there a certain way to do it no well i'm, I'm doing it through our email marketing company yeah. and we, we we you know we fashion the emails for that campaign and, and they send them out. Having said that, they know historically what's worked. So we've taken advice from them. Yeah, I think you've just got to keep doing it. You know, you will get less traction during hard times than you would normally, but you just have to keep persisting. You know, it's it's just about the grind very often. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, there are other ways to engage, um, and you'll know more about this than, than I do, but, you know, it, follow people on, on social, uh, if you know if you've got a prized prospect, then you know stay, stalk them on LinkedIn, find out what they're posting, um, add comments and so on, link in with them. I mean, there are all those kind of ways. Um, but you know, particularly in this climate, it's it's about persistence. Yeah, I agree, and I think that the story you told of of you know when you first had tumbleweed and then you were just persistent. And then what happened was, you know, you, I guess, got lucky, but to a certain extent, you came across someone that gave you two years worth of work. Uh, I think that's quite a common story. You know, if you are persistent uh, as a freelancer, especially that, you know, freelancers need to essentially just get enough work for themselves. Uh, as agency founders, we've got a tougher job of having to feed an yeah. entire agency constantly. Um, you know, you can find that one right connection. You know, you can reach out to 100 people. And one of them might be someone that, you know, feeds you with work for a couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Um, or, or longer if you, if you maintain that relationship. Yeah. 
And the, the other big thing to say this, particularly when, it, when you do maintain relationships, is um, don't just do good work. Um, be good to work with. Mm. And, you know, there are plenty of people out there who are good at what they do. However, um, it's not good enough to be good at what you do. Yeah. You've got to be good to work with because you can be, you can, you know, you can be a great writer, you can be a great designer, great whatever. But if you're a pain in the ass to work with, then people yeah. don't want to work with you and they'll go to the person who, the, you know, the next person in the queue who is nice to work with and who can do equally good work. So, you know, just be likable, you know, don't be difficult with clients. Always look, you know, always look to solve their pain. Um, bend over for them and those kind of things you know that, that that counts for just as much as the quality of your work your work's got to be good of course it has yeah um, but you've got to be good to work with I 100% agree with that and there have been many freelancers that we've kind of dropped essentially for that very reason um, yeah. I'd say that you know sometimes freelancers of, of designers and copywriters can be you know diva-esque if that's a word and yeah. throw their toys out of the pram if something's not quite going right and get getting get quite precious over their work um yeah. if if you're like that it's important to to, to keep that inside you know and one yeah. thing i'd add to it to that is if you're working with an agency such as ours um and the end client might be you know you might not have direct uh, connection or relationship with the end client and i've noticed that some freelancers you know they'll get the the agency will get negative feedback will pass something on will be very tactful will pass it on to the freelancer and they might yeah. throw their toys out of the pram um but again it's equally important to be nice to work with with the agency don't don't yeah. think that just because you're getting ne negative feedback from some third party that you can just complain about it because mm -hmm. the more complaints you get the the less that we'll want to work with you essentially yeah of course and you've got to remember if you're working for an agency you're representing the agency you know you might be a freelancer but you've got to look after their reputation yeah uh and that, that's really important you know the the relationships are massively important in this again you know they're they're as important if not more important than the actual work that you do Definitely. So back to emails, you know, you work with freelancers, we work with freelancers. Um, we get approached quite a lot um, yeah. by all kinds of different uh, copywriters. Some applications are better than others, you know, not, yeah. not all applications are born equal, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. And we touch on that in, in, our, in our course bundle. Um, what would you say is like a recipe for a good uh you know cold email coming from a, a new freelancer that you makes you think mm, i like this person i want to put them on 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 the books and, and yeah. potentially work with them okay well first of all they've got to get over the, the the initial hurdle which is that you know they've got to be able to spell and punctuate correctly yeah. and if they don't then they're immediately in the bin um then the, there's kind of two things i'm I'll be looking out for um, um, one or one or other of these will get me interested. One is a uh, is skill set. So if someone comes to me and says, you know, I mean, I keep going on about tech because we do a lot of work in tech. Who says, you know, I am an experienced tech writer. I've written for X Y Z publications. I've written for these commercial clients. You know, I've written for Microsoft, IBM, whatever, whatever. Or, you know, better still, you know, I'm a, I'm a crypto expert, or I'm a, you know, a fintech expert, or you know, a insurance tech expert. They've got a real niche expertise. Yeah. That will that will pique my interest. Um, the other thing you know if it's if there is a general copyright then doesn't write in cliches um who has got some spark like you you you've got this in spades conrad you know you are you, you're, yeah, oh, you have you know you, you 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 you're just you know you're a great writer and you just you know you you bring energy to writing in a way you know that i 
you know, I, I can do if I give myself time, but I think you're a natural. So somebody who writes like that, you know, we've got, we both use a freelance writer called Matt Fidge, right? Mm. And Matt, he wrote to me out of the blue and I, I, I just love the email. And, and the great thing about Matt, and this is, this is another thing I was going to say, if you've got someone who can both write, but also knows, um, as, as is well grounded in digital marketing, so knows about SEO, for example, you know, they've worked on outreach campaigns, they can write emails as well as articles, you know, those people are really gold dust, you know, so if you, you know, the, the absolute perfect candidate would be someone um, who, as say a journalist by, uh, by training, so they, you know, they're accurate, they're fast, you know they've got the they've got the grammar and the punctuation nailed mm -hmm. uh, but they've moved over into commercial copywriting either in digital marketing or you know maybe in old school advertising yeah you know, those yeah. people are really valuable um so you know people who are maybe just starting out as copywriters or are making the shift to be copywriters um you know it it you say you're a journalist and you want to be a copywriter then really try and hone those creative skills really try and make your writing not only informative but punchy and a bit original yeah you know if you're a if you're sort of come up through the creative copywriting route then work on the long form work on the sort of more journalistic type pieces and you know work on your speed as well now i'm a slow writer um as you know a lot of um a lot of the uh, work that we get, uh, you're, you pay, you're paid by output. So, you know, if it takes you um, a day to write a 500 word piece and you're getting paid um, 100 quid for that piece or less sometimes, uh, then you're not gonna make a great living. You know, mm -hmm. if you can write 2,000 word pieces a day, yeah. That you're getting 200 quid for each then you're making a good living so speed is really important um there are people who are really at the top you know who've got uh, who you know have that um advertising industry pedigree who can still command amazing day rates um but you know they are really fine craftspeople um and it takes a while to get to that level I think that speed is a really good point, a really interesting point. Um, maybe something that we haven't touched on enough in our course that, you know, well, that's why we're, we're getting people to practice. I mean, practice makes perfect, but it also helps you speed up. Mm. Um, I'm notoriously slow as well, actually, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm a copywriting agency founder rather than a copywriter. <laughs> I was a bit too slow. I don't, don't really practice what I preach as much. Um, but it, it is super important, you know, when you get to be really good at your game and really fast, you can make a lot of money, you know, and like you said, you're, if you're being paid by the hour, um, then you, you know, you might not lose out in a situation where you're, you know, given, given a task, it's that you're, you're, you're charging by word count or for a specific deliverable. You need to make sure it's, it's, it's worth the time for you. But on, on the other on the other end of the spectrum, you know, if you're charging by the deliverable, let's say um, per page for a website, which is often the case when you know you're starting mm. out, um, and you're super fast and it's good quality, you know, you could be earning very good money per hour for for that. Um, but again, I think it just it takes practice to get to that. Yeah, point. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need you need to. You, it's a craft. You need to learn it. Yeah. And another interesting point you said there was when approaching a, an agency like ours, um, which would also apply to an ad agency or a marketing agency, uh, the email that you write, obviously as a copywriter, is ridiculously important. And you know we won't even look at the portfolio if the email doesn't have a bit of uh, pizzazz. It doesn't have, yeah. it doesn't show your writing skills. So if you're thinking about writing a super formal um, to whom it may concern type email then yeah you know, think again is what I'd say yeah yeah absolutely yeah I mean don't say something like you know I am a conscientious and curious individual you know I get so <laughs> many like that you know people calling themselves individuals you know it's like well you know that's the kind of 
contradiction in terms almost because it's what everybody else is calling themselves. Yeah, exactly. Um, so do you have a top tip for a newbie? I mean, we, we've talked, we've, you've given a lot of tips, but do you have a top tip for a newbie starting out? Yeah, um, get yourself a style guide because um, you need to be, you know, if you're going to be taken seriously, you really need to be able to know how to punctuate um, to, you know, know the difference between the spellings of, you know, discrete. Discrete has two meanings and two spellings, for example, and lots of words do be able to, you know, just have all that basic stuff nailed. Now, the one that um, I use and like, and um, because they, you know, they've had a very successful web presence for a long time uh, and a really nailed web writing as a result of that is the Guardians. The Guardian style guide is very good. Mm. And the Guardian has, you know, uh, reasonably informal um, online style, but it's, you know, it's very solid. So I think if you, if you can master that, um, from the outset, then, you, you know, you're over the first hurdle. So that I'd, I'd say, you know, when you're at base camp, do that. And I, and I think that, um, you know, whilst journalists are trained in that, I think people who are self-taught copywriters or who, you know, who've come up maybe through a digital marketing route and want to make the step into copywriting, um, they, that piece of the jigsaw is often missing so i'd say that that would be my top tip and it, it you know it's fairly dull stuff um but if you know if you pick up the guardian style guide it's a couple of hundred pages read it you'll learn a lot and keep it on your shelf to keep referring to awesome so thank you yeah there. i actually we we dropped in a, an example in our one of our courses in one of the lessons of uh the guardian tone of voice because i love how distinct it is like very well crafted for their specific target audience. Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay. What about uh, any like mistakes to avoid, like common pitfalls that a copywriter um, might fall into from you know at an early stage? Any any sort of you know advice there? Yeah. Well, I mean, one one probably bugbear for both of us is um, deadlines hit your deadlines and if you can't <laughs> flag it well in advance you know um we still have instances where people you know will tell us an hour before deadline so oh i've only just made a start on this or whatever you know it, remember the big thing you've got to remember is you want to make everyone who works with you's life as good as possible yeah now into every life a little rain must fall but if you you know, if rain's going to come, you want to make the umbrella as big as possible and just try and, you know, when, when problems are going to arise, do all you can to minimize them because problems will arise. So it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, keep, the one thing you got to keep in your head is that the people you are working for want their working day to be as pleasant as possible. So you got to stress them you know you want you want to cause them minimum or ideally no stress you want to be nice to them personable and of course you want to do a good job but doing a good job you know creating good copy is only part of it you've yeah. got to think holistically about pleasing your client how to please your client i think that 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 is one of the challenges of going freelance that you know i'd like to be quite frank about you know i think a lot of people think oh, I'm good at this, I'm good at writing, or I'm good at design, or I'm good at baking cakes. And so I'm going to go freelance and set up my own business, essentially, which yeah. is what you're doing as a freelancer. However, you know, when you're a freelancer, you're essentially like a tradesman. You're, is that you're, you're, you're a copywriter, but you're also, you also have to be an account manager, right? You have to sort of handle yeah. that account and be nice and get results and, and, and keep them happy um you know you have to be a finance person you have to look after your finances yeah. as well um and kind of a multitude of other professions all in one essentially you're like yeah. an agency but all in one person yeah that's right absolutely right um which is kind of why i made this step into um you know my view is that you might as well be an agency you might as well set up on your own as an agency and have that ad an agency 
identity. So, you know, rather than being called John Smith copywriter, you could be, you know, JS and company, whatever, you know, you, you, yeah. you cause you, you're dead right. You are a one person agency and you might as well build on that and, you know, become what I call a kitchen table agency, you know, and when you start getting more work that you can handle, then you find good freelancers to work with and, you know, then you can scale up a bit and in increase your income, you know, it, for actually not, not really any more work. Yeah, this is a, a nice segue to, I think, asking you at least to kind of explain your kitchen table community and, and methodology and, and book, etc. This is your time to plug yeah. Okay. Plug the kitchen table. Right. Well, I'm, I'm just about to launch a thing called the kitchen table community, which is born of my experience of running what I call a kitchen table agency, which is an agency without really without staff where all your creative work is done by freelancers and you don't necessarily have an office. You might work from your kitchen table. Hence the name. Um, and it's really aimed at two lots of people. It's aimed at people who already own agencies like that. So they've kind of, you know, they're expanded from being a freelancer and they've got a network of people they use and they've got an identity, a brand that, you know, isn't them. Um, and it's also aimed at people who are currently freelance who want to make that step into being an agency owner. Actually, they might not be freelance. They might have a staff job, but they've thought to themselves, yeah, it'd be good to have an agency, but I don't really know how to do it because I'm a creative and therefore not very business minded, just as I was, you know. So what the community does, it's 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 about four things. It's about peer support. You know, we, we're, we're all in the same boat. We support each other. It's about working with each other. So there's going to be a marketplace in there where people can trade services and eventually where companies will be able to hire in agency services. Um, there'll be um, a lot of content on how to run it. I mean, I've written a book called The Kitchen Table Method and created a course called The Kitchen Table Agency Course, which is on Teachable. Uh, and then they'll also get um, member perks. So they'll get deals on things, deals on products and services that can, you know, help make their agency fly. So that uh, that's going to soft launch next week. Um, it's been working on it for three years. And, um, you know, hoping the community will grow from that, you know, those two bases, you know, existing agency owners and freelancers mm. who want to become agencies. Well, obviously for our community, if anyone's willing to move quickly and make that kind of step, you know, some of our uh, learners will already be copywriters wanting to improve and take that next step. And maybe we'll, you know, this will be the time for them to branch out and do as we both did, reach out to other copywriters yeah. and say, hey, let's kind of put our portfolio together. That's essentially what I did in the... Uh, the uh, yeah, that's what that's, you, that's... And, you know, I mean, this is, this is the model for the future. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that this agency model not only because we're in difficult economic times and it's, it's, it's a good model to have in that because you don't have high overheads, but it's, it's just of the time, you know, people, people, you know, I was a father when I set up the agency, you know, people want flexible ways of working mm. and the world is accepting that that's how we work. You know, the barrier between work and social life and work and leisure is breaking down. You know, if you're, I always use this sort of, you know, this persona of the, the, the digital nomad who, is working from a beach bar in Thailand. Obviously not in the moment, you know, they're probably working <laughs> from a quarantine center in Thailand. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, when things uh, get back to some semblance of normality and certainly, you know, before the coronavirus crisis, you know, there were, there's legions of people who are, uh, you know, working in their leisure time almost. I mean, you know, if you're at a beach bar on your laptop, putting together a, you know a logo or writing an article or doing an SEO campaign are you at work or are you on holiday you know you're somewhere in between so I, I just think this the society's attitudes to work are you know it, it's changing massively um, and so our you know our commercial models uh, are changing with it, and they're going to change even more. You know, so I, I'm I'm thoroughly convinced that the model that we've both developed and hundreds of others are mm. for the creative industries and many other industries are going to be the future. You yeah. know, we're gonna we're gonna work in this way, and we're going to be working at eleven o'clock at night, but you know, at three in the afternoon, we might be with our kids or you know, on the at the beach or whatever it might be. I think that probably you and I were, 
sort of maybe understood that before this whole current crisis happened, yeah. but now everyone's beginning to, well, we've been thrown into it, right? We're all yeah. kind of on a level playing field. Every, every Zoom chat I have, no matter if it's with a, some big corporate tech company in, in the US or, or wherever, I'm talking to people in their living room with their kids running around and it's yeah. obviously a terrible situation, but kind of weirdly refreshing in a certain way and weirdly yeah. kind of comforting that we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Um, and I think you, you answered my last question, which was what are your kind of predictions for the future of the industry, which is, is really great. You jumped, you jumped to it. <laughs> yeah. um, well, so, life's never going to be the same for a lot of people, you know, yeah. and the sooner we recognize that and adapt, the better. And we, we you know, we've got the tools, the tools here. We, we you know, we, we're talking to each other on zoom. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's brilliant. Um, and the will is there because people want to sort out the lower life balance, you know, the, who wants to commute and, and then, you know, commuting, there's the environmental imperative as well. We've got to do less commuting. Um, so, you know, the, the current crisis is just, you know, all of a sudden it's brought these things to the fore, but they were mm -hmm. there, you know, they were creeping up on us. Now they've just leapt on us. Forced into it. Yeah. Yeah. So my last question is, are you at your kitchen table right now? No, I'm what in my we bedroom. Know. That's what we want to know. <laughs> no, I wish. I know I've got, I've got, I'm on a, a big, I'm on a desktop computer uh, on a desk, which I've set up in my bedroom. So no, I'm not. Good um, enough. But, good enough. It's there, thereabouts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Thanks so much, John. I, I think you have shared a lot of really, really helpful tips um, today for our community. I hope that, you know, we can both con continue to support each other and potentially Absolutely, yeah. feed our communities into each other. And, you know, yeah, we, we, sure. we've always got good working relationships. So we'll, we'll keep that going. And yeah, Brilliant. thanks again. Okay, pleasure, Conrad. Good to speak. Cheers, Take care. John. Bye. Thanks a lot.